Hello and welcome to the Materiality in Art poster presentation. Professor Walcott and I focused our research on materiality and how each material contributes something different to each work. We accomplished this by working with a variety of materials and reviewing the catalog and online exhibition of The Allure of Matter. From this, we gained an understanding of the different roles material can have and increased our material vocabulary. Being able to collaborate was important to us. Our goals were to explore a range of materials not only together, but also individually. From this, we could create small sculptures by passing our collections of materials back and forth each week. From these, we created larger versions by solely judging materiality. Having completed our plans for this research before the pandemic hit, our execution looked a little bit different. So our first five weeks were virtual. We would video chat and have phone conversations regarding the Allure of Matter exhibition and regarding specific materials and techniques such as whittling or carving. Each week we would pack up a random selection of materials to create the start of a new small ping pong sculpture. And from our research, we were able to create a research website along with developing a list of seven material categories. Before I get into the categories, I just wanna go over what the progression of these small ping pongs look like. So on the far left, you can see this orange piece of soap is whittled down. And then the next stage, it looks like some string and spray foam were added. And then following that stage, some air dry clay was added on top. So you can see this play between who has the material and what is added each week. So our material categories were determined based on what we learned going through the exhibition and from our interview with Oriana Cachione who is the co-curator of the exhibition. So our wrist leads reads as cultural material, embodied history, ephemeral material, intrinsic properties, object material, personal material, and subject material. So in this piece on the left by Sai Guo Chang, his mountain range piece was created using gunpowder on paper. So after doing some more research on gunpowder and the history of gunpowder and more research on the artist himself, we decided that this piece and gunpowder in particular fit into the categories of cultural material and object material. For our own research, Lisa and I found that most of our work was based around the intrinsic property categories, which kind of includes how the material informs the form and construction of the work. So our second five weeks were in person, which was amazing. We honestly didn't know if this was going to be able to happen. So when we were in the studio, we had an intense focus on materiality. So we did two different kinds of mold making. The first is a brush on mold, which is in the top left. I used the brush on mold to cast a piece of concrete that I found out on the road. And I casted that in plaster, wax, and cement. And I casted with the same materials an apple, but instead of using a brush on mold, I used a pour mold. So we made these figures out of fabric and cement. We would thoroughly mix the cement and then we would have this flannel material that was soaked in water and we would soak it in the cement. And once it was finely soaked in the cement, we would lay it over this form that we had created beforehand such as piling up a stack of buckets or some boxes or a table. We would lay over that and then add more cement so it was stable and so that most of the flannel material was covered. And once it dried, it created these really interesting forms that emphasized layers and the empty space inside. So giving an example, um, working from small to large, Again, thinking about that intrinsic property of the materials. So in this case, some of the main materials such as the foam or the yellow balloon or the string or the peg were translated into something large. The rope was replaced with galvanized cable because the rope that we used on the small sculpture has a wax coating on it. So it was harder to tie together. And we felt that the galvanized cable had a similar materiality and also helped structure our piece really nicely. And the yellow plastic um, sheeting that's on the one on the right replaces the yellow balloon. We thought that the, the balloon had nice um, folding qualities, which we could replicate with the yellow plastic sheeting. 
So here's an overview of our research presentation. Let's sit on it. So you can see all of our large sculptures in the main area of the gallery and around the corner on the right, we have all of these small ping pongs that we created throughout the research project. So I want to emphasize the number of small sculptures and the number of materials that we used. We placed these around the corner from the rest of the large ping pongs. So you had that separation and you could go back and forth between them and maybe try to find the small one that we were replicating. So they're laid out on this makeshift table in accordance of social distancing and kind of how Lisa and I felt during the research during the summer and according to how a ping pong ball would be hit on a table in all those different spots. So going over some examples of the large ones, the small to large ones. So keep in mind that these small sculptures are only a few inches tall and a few inches wide. They're not very big, whereas the large sculptures in this case often go over our heads, so over six feet tall. So going over the materials in this one, we felt that the wire used in the small piece was best represented with metal rod. It has the same line quality that we really enjoy. Instead of taking the entire rubber tubing around the arch, we decided to just hint at it with a piece of foam that we put on there with pipe cleaners and then we coated the foam in a rubber used for our mold making. So the mass at the bottom on the left, it's formed with wax, hot glue, a little bit of spray foam, and random detritus that we kind of found laying around. And we kind of tried to replicate that, but with different materials on the right. So I have a lot of cottonwood trees around my house and I could collect a lot of cottonwood. And we felt that that was a similar process to fighting all these little scraps around the studio. So I found all of these chunks of cottonwood floating around and we adhered them together with concrete, cement, plaster, wax. It supports the whole piece so it doesn't just fall over. And we covered that up with the cottonwood and any of the leftover materials such as the wax or the plaster were poured on top of this in order to keep weighing it down. So the main structure of this piece on the left is a broken fork and that is replicated with the broken chair. The different um, prongs on the fork kind of get replicated with the broken chair legs on the right. So the blue tape I thought replicated nicely with a blue piece of foam and the foam, while it doesn't stick to anything really, it has that nice plasticity that I was looking for. Also the colors matched up really nicely. And finally, the major form in the middle on the left is plaster and wax. Um, and we felt that those materials can be kind of shaped and molded to anything. So we thought that foam, which can be shaped and molded into anything, was a nice addition. I will just go through the rest of the ones we decided to make large. The COVID-19 pandemic altered the planned research patterns. However, the collaboration seemed more relevant than ever in such circumstances, and the work produced inherently includes this connection throughout space. Thank you.